Hello dear friends, we are discussing here about bryophytes regarding the classification in bryophytes with respect to the GM Smith system of classification in bryophytes. So what is so essential about GM Smith only? The GM Smith is honorable scientist who have given the system of classification of bryophyte which is the main topic of discussion of today's lecture. Myself, Professor Khorde Rishikesh working as assistant professor in department of botany Restrictions of Stars, SM Joshi College, Hadap Sir, Pune. Here on the screen, we are highlighting the features of Savitribhai Phule Pune University syllabus to which our college is associated. In our syllabus, we have reached up to the chapter Bryophyte, in which in last lecture, we have discussed about the general features, introductory point of view, the vegetative and reproductive features of Bryophyte. In today's lecture, we are focusing on the general classification scheme which is provided by the scientist G. M. Smith. So this classification scheme is very interesting. They have divided the bryophyte in three different major groups which are known as, as shown in the screen, liverworts, hornworts and maasai. So what are the, these names liver and horn and maasai? The liverwort means hepatase. Hornwort means anthocerote and Maasai are nothing but the moss. So we will be discussing about each class of bryophyte in detail, the key features in them. So let's begin with the first class of bryophytes which is nothing but the liverwort or hepatase group of bryophytes. So the name, the reason behind this type of name is that they are look like the human being liver. In the picture, I have shown you the liver shape of human being. They are look, they are looking like like analogous to the homologous to the human uh, liver by the structure. And interestingly, in medicinal purpose, many human liver diseases can be cured with the help of these bryophytes, which are belonging to the hepatase. So it is coincidence, but they look like liver. That's why they are named as hepatase and liverwort simultaneously the alternative names are given to this class of bryophytes so if you look closely to these types of bryophytes they are dorsiventrally flat the meaning of dorsiventrally flat means they are very thin in structure and if you see closely the scales are present on these bryophytes especially hepatase i am talking here the rhizoids are also present in the case of these types of liverwort or uh, hepatase type of bryophytes. The examples of this class are Mercantia and Rixia. These are very famous name and generally required for practical purpose in FOSY, TYBS level. So these bryophytes shows rhizoid which are root like functioning structure which are present in the bryophytes performing the absorption of water and minerals as well as giving support to these bryophytes. But the key feature is that these rhizoids are unicellular but are of two different types in case of liverworts. The type of rhizoid varies in three different classes. I will highlight them where it is needed. The rhizoids in Mercantia means liverworts means hepatase are of two different types namely tuberculated and smooth walled rhizoids. So what are these two differences uh, in the type of rhizoids? That is, if they are septed inside, if they are showing some what complex structure within the rhizoid that is tuberculated. And if they are very simple as shown in the figure, it is it will be easy for you to recognize and identify the differences. They are smooth walled rhizoids. So after talking about their vegetative appearance, let's discuss about their reproductive structure as shown in the figure. Or a diagram that reproductive organs are often present on the dorsal side or sometimes it is seen that they are present on the dorsal side but at the terminal position means at the tip region of the thallus surface so what these uh, reproductive organs are doing there they produces gametes male and female gametes after union of gametes we know the embryo will develop and the embryo will result into the sporophyte. These sporophytes are completely dependent upon the gametophyte. We can thought it as a parasitic nature. So gametophytes are independent, green in color, haploid and sporophytic are blackish in color, dependent upon gametophyte and diploid in nature. So differences in gametophyte and sporophyte, you should understand this first. 
this gametophyte and sporophyte difference on the basis of their ploid status as well as what they produces. Sporophyte releases spores, gametophyte releases gametes. This sporophyte shows three distinct regions as shown in the figure put, seta and capsule are the three regions in sporophyte. You should remember the morphological feature of sporophyte also. So we have said sporophyte releases spores. But from which region of embryo, this, please listen carefully, this is very important on which questions are based. From which region of embryo these sporophytes are developed? So the answer is from endothecium cells of embryo these sporophytes are developed. Not complete sporophyte are involved in releasing of spores. The cells in sporophyte are known as sporogenous tissue. The cells in sporophyte known as sporogenous tissue which actually releases spores are developed from endothecium cell. So please remember this endothecium cells are of embryo which use the sporophytic sporogenous tissue which releases spores. Most importantly the capsule wall, the capsule wall means the covering structure of sporophyte is just one layer thick. It is unicellular if you take TS of sporophyte you will find the capsule wall is just one layer thick and the breakdown fashion of this capsule is irregular. There is no particular method how to break the capsule. It ruptures irregularly, ruptures for to release the spores. So the spores will land somewhere and give rise to a new thallus. So please remember no stomata are present on the sporophyte in case of hepatitis or liver wart. The examples are rickshia and Mercantia. It was regarding the first category of bryophyte that is liver wart. So let's discuss or let's move to the another type of uh, bryophytic plant which is horn wart or anthocerote. Horn means what? In case of animals we have uh, we can see the horns to that animals. These types of structures are visible in case of anthocerote. These horns are nothing but the sporophytes which is growing on the uh, gametophyte structure of that anthocerote bryophytic plant. These horn wart are showing dorsiventral flat like structure. The proto photograph will help you to understand about the differences in bryophytic different different categories. These horn warts are also flat and contain rhizoid at the lower surface. Rhizoid will definitely present at the lower surface only. How rhizoid will present on the upper surface functioning to the plant? Because they are absorbing the water and water is in the soil. So rhizoids are definitely present on the lower surface of thalloid, thallus. And the plant body which contain rhizoid, these rhizoids are only one type which are smooth walled rhizoid. And you look or examine carefully with the magnifying lens, you will find there are no any type of scales are present on this type of bryophyte. So there are differences, we will highlight them later. Here you just remember no scales, rhizoids with smooth walled only. The diagram shows the anthocerote member shows no air pores, the complete tight body and each cell shows presence of conspicuous or compact chloroplast like structure. So which is very different from the anthocerote and uh, hepatitis differences. So after looking at the vegetative uh, portion of the anthocerote member, let's discuss about the reproductive portion where the reproductive organs which are male and female of different type, male organ are known as anthridium and female organ known as archegonium. Male organ releases male gametes and female organ releases female gametes which are of variation in their size. So the anthridium which are developed from hypodermal tissues but the archegonium develop from superficial tissues. So this is the difference between the developmental fashion of these two sex organs in case of hornworth types of plants. After talking about reproductive organs we can see the structure of the sporophyte which is developed from the embryo. This sporophytes shows distinct foot and elongated meristematic zone in case of sporophyte. The, the structure in sporophytic contain meristematic tissues which is the absent in case of uh, liverwort types of bryophytes. Here the meristematic cells are present in case of sporophyte of hornwort. 
and the, if you see the dehiscence means breakdown fashion of the bryophyte in case of hornworts shows very systematic way when we say in case of liverwort it dehisces irregularly but in this case hornworts they dehisces in proper systematic way so this is the course of evolution so already we have said that the spores which are produced by the sporogenous tissue which are present in the sporophyte when we say the sporophyte releases spores but the spores are produced from the sporogenous tissue these sporogenous tissues are produced from the embryo but which part of the embryo is amphitheseous type of cells in the embryo remember in liverwort we have said the endothelium cells of embryo responsible for formation of sporogenous tissue in sporophyte here we are saying that the cells of embryo which are known as amphitheseous cells are responsible for forming of sporogenous tissue in sporophyte of in case of hornwort or anthocerotic type of plant and finally the examples of these hornwort or anthocerotic members are anthocerous and dendroceros the pictures i have shown on the screen belonging to the anthocerous and dendroceros member of anthocerotic or hornwort types of plants so let's move to the next and last class or portion of the bryophytic plant group which is known as maasai the name which indicate maasai or moss are most developed form of bryophytes out of the previous two forms liverwort and hornwort these maasai type of plants or bryophytic plants are very advanced advanced because they show some peculiar typical characteristic like plants they shows root like structure but not typical root like but they have somewhat similarities with the roots but still they contain rhizoids these rhizoids are not unicellular these rhizoids are multicellular remember rhizoids are unicellular in both cases anthocerotic and hepatici here rhizoids are multicellular there are leaves like structures are also present and these structures are present in whorl whorl means in a group two to three layers of groups of leaves like structures are present which are microscopic but they are present by looking in magnifying glass you will surprise it look like a plant but please remember this is not perfect higher plant these are cryptogams and very primitive in their structures but these maasai are somewhat advanced than the other two groups in the bryophytes after looking at the vegetative structure let's discuss about the reproductive structure there the reproductive organs which are developed from the superficial cells i am talking about some cells because the cells are highlighting character questions are based on this we will be asked in mcq which types of cells are responsible for development of reproductive organ in case of maasai so the superficial cells are responsible for development of reproductive organs in case of maasai please remember and note down this reproductive organ develops gametes and after the union of gametes embryo develops embryo result into the formation of sporophyte and the sporophyte in case of maasai as shown in the figure are very peculiar in character which shows foot set a capsule structure which is very advanced as compared to the other two groups in the bryophytes so what is so advanced in them they contain stomata on their sporophyte which is very peculiar characteristics and the dehiscence capacity or dehiscence tendency or dehiscence means breakdown style or fashion is unique as compared to the other group of bryophytes so what is so special that the sporophytic capsule break open from the region which is very peculiar known as operculum 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 is the part of the sporophyte which is the area from where that sporophyte is break open so the sporophyte contains sporogenous tissue which sporogenous tissue releases spores the sporogenous tissue in case of the maasai are developed from endothelium layer of cell of embryo so here is something interesting for you the comparative analysis of bryophytic three different classes where liverwort hornwort and maasai if you talk about rhizoids in case of liverwort rhizoids are unicellular in case of hornwort rhizoids are unicellular and in case of maasai they are multicellular rhizoids in first class are of two types in second class only one type 
so here they are multicellular so there is no issue of talking about whether which type of rhizoids are present okay in first category the sporogenous tissue development differences in second category and third category you should highlight these common points which are given in your syllabus so the stomata presence on sporophyte or not from which region of embryo sporophyte develops how the capsule of the that plant gets breaks open the fashion of breaking of capsule from area of breaking of capsule so these are the key points how we can remember the differences of these three different classes of bryophytes the best way is to make the differences on one paper so it will be photogenic memory for you to remember these points so by this i am ending this lecture by conclusion of understanding of gm smith of classification for liverwort hornwort and maasai so in next lecture we will be discussing about the life cycle pattern in bryophytes already in first lecture we have seen some peculiar characteristics but here in next lecture we will be discussing about the actual form of reproduction methodologies so thank you for watching this lecture please don't forget to subscribe and please visit to the red knowledge bank please subscribe to this channel so you will get automatic notification of new lectures thank you we will meet in next lecture